The ongoing war between Russia and Ukraine has set up alarm bells around the world. To prevent another war, many democracies have sent their representative to Taiwan, where China threatens to take control by force if necessary. How does symbolic support translate into real action? I talked to Dr. Strzok Zimmerman, head of Germany's Parliamentary Defense Committee, and FDP's deputy chair, Johannes Vogel, who are visiting Taiwan to see what Germany will do next. Thank you both for joining DW's interview. Um, my first question goes to Dr. Strzok Zimmerman. For your visit this time, you talk about solidarity, but now Taiwan needs to strengthen its defenses. Do you think Germany should provide Taiwan with full-scale weapon systems? We had a very interesting many conversations the last three days, and that's not the question. The question um, on the view of the politic here is that we, are, um, that we are looking for maybe a different kind of economic uh, in questions of China. This is a, the big threat. And uh, the military things are no topic, and I think there are b really good partner here in this area. Mm -hmm. But you said the war in Ukraine is a wake-up call for the whole world, right? Yes. But Germany resisted providing Ukraine with weapons until after Russia invaded. Wasn't it too late? Shouldn't Germany learn the lesson with Taiwan? Oh, no, you can't compare it. Uh, Ukraine, it's a European country. It's in the heart of Europe. It's really close to, to Germany. And um, the difference is it's, it's not a question of moral or war is war and dead is dead and it's everything is terrible. Uh, but the thing is that uh, it's um, in, in, in Europe and uh, we have to protect, we have to help Ukraine um, because otherwise um, Russian won't stop. And uh, Putin said it very clearly that um, he wants uh, uh, to win this war. And afterwards, he will look again for Georgia, ag again for Moldavia, and uh, in the worst case, uh, to the Baltic states. And this is an area of NATO. And then we have a really a big problem um, in Europe. So first of all, we delivered ma now many weapons, mm. also mm. Uh, economic and humanitarian um, stuff for the Ukraine. And um, I think we have a lot to do. And it's also very important for this part of the world that in Europe we'll be on peace. I mean, after the Second World War, it's uh, the first huge uh, war um, where one country attack another one um, yeah, in an imperialistic uh, way. Yeah. If I may add, um, yes. I think if, you, if my, my colleague uh, said it's a wake-up call, she's 100% right. Um, it's a wake-up call in that sense that um, it underli underlines the severeness of the systemic competitions we're in. And that there is not only Putin. There is also um, the rapid change, the nature of the Chinese uh, government is undertaking under Xi Jinping. Um, and uh, what is necessary for Europeans is to, and for Germany, to care about these specific questions. Mm -hmm. And this is new. I mean, it hasn't been the case before. It's this, this perhaps th our trip as a very small element from parliamentarians, but also the debates um, uh, of a new China strategy, all that is some kind of a global approach, is a pivot um, uh, to, to the Pacific in a way. Um, and um, it, it would be wrong to, um, to have only one schematic, um, uh, schematic policy tool set because uh, the, the competitions and the questions are as serious but they are, on the other hand, different um, and special and complex. And what we think is that um, it is necessary to make sure that a horrible war is not happening in the yes. Pacific. Um, and of course this is also about deterrence, to make that very clear, very specific. But it's another question to think about what can everybody and what can, for example, Germany and Europe bring on this table to participate and support deterrence. And there, of course, economic questions, reducing the dependencies, uh, for example, on Chinese market, mm -hmm. being able to lay out a policy um, which is um, serious and is taken serious that um, in a hor horrible scenario, in a aggressive uh, escalation, yes. there would happen something, for yes. example, also on the economic front. And all that 
not to talk about um, uh, these, not to not to uh, uh, not to talk about um, uh, these, but because of we learn from history that uh, to avoid something, you have to think it through and you have to think about what can you do to be part of the avoidance. And what Germany uh, can do is, of course, different uh, on European soil and in the Pacific. But people do feel an urgency here. I don't know when you, uh, in your visit, yeah. you've heard people talking about, some people even say this year, 2023, 2020, 2027, or 2030, right? So it's like the war is coming. That, that's why um, Taiwanese President Tsai Ing-wen, she said that she needs democratic allies, including Germany, mm -hmm. to maintain the original order. So what about some of the concrete actions if we talk about something feasible now mm -hmm. that Germany can do? It would, if I may, um, uh, but, but we're here yeah. to talk about these issues. We're here to listen. Uh, and we and take... talk about <laughs> us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The German press is talking about yeah. us. Really. And I think the, uh, the, the, the involvement is also supported by this trip. I mean, it's obvious. And on the other hand, we do take um, uh, democratic uh, politicians, like the ones we're talking to here uh, uh, in Taiwan, we take them serious and we listen to what, to, to what they have to say. And what they say is they have a realistic perspective on what everybody can bring. And of course, we can't talk about every detail on a, uh, on a live TV interview, <laughs> and not even if it's not live and but recorded. Um, but um, uh, you, that means something no, 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 no. But you can be, be sure that, um, uh, of course, we, we listen to it, we bring it to a strategic debate, and we feel encouraged mm -hmm. in our view that Germany's part is mainly economic, um, and that that is serious, that is feasible. Dr. Strzok Zimmerman, the Chinese government is objecting to your visit. What's your response? The good news is um, it's not so um, an astonished moment for us. We, we are, um, how could I say that the ambassador is not happy, the Chinese ambassador that we uh, travel uh, to Taiwan. It's not really a surprise. But uh, the good thing is that we are uh, in a free country and uh, so the ambassador could s say whatever he want. This is his right in a free country. And the second good news are that um, we are free elected uh, um, uh, par uh, members of parliament. And so as a parliamentarian, we could travel wherever we want. Mm -hmm. Mr. Vogel, um, Chinese President Xi Jinping says Taiwan is a purely internal matter for China and he reserves the right to bring about reunification by force. What do you say to that? We say uh, that our view, is, our view is crystal clear. Uh, any change, of course the, the, the whole question um, around this conflict around Taiwan is complex. Uh, we've seen that in uh, systemic uh, competitions in the past. Questions, especially at the front line at these systemic competitions, are complex. Uh, the situation of Germany in the Cold War and Taiwan now is totally different because it's a different and new, um, uh, new questions we are facing, but it's both were comp Germany's questions were complex and Taiwan today is complex. But one thing for us and our view is crystal clear, any change of the status quo, um, including the reality of a democratic society and a society in Taiwan who enjoys freedom, um, and we care about freedom as free Democrats, um, can only be changed peacefully and in mutual agreement. Mutual agreement. And so every that sees changing the uh, People's Republic of China policy, um, that, that's where the aggressiveness is coming from, um, from Beijing. Um, that he talks about the possibility of military reunification in his words. Um, uh, and that you can learn and see here, what we've learned that nearly every day there are concrete maneuvers um, uh, uh, even across the med median line of the Taiwan Strait. So obviously um, he wants to have this military option to be being taken serious. Um, and we say that is unacceptable. Um, uh, to make that crystal clear, um, mutual agreement, fine. Um, 
acting, uh, uh, attempt to change the status quo by force or, or only threatening to do so, to undertake such an attempt, is unacceptable. And that's not only our position, it's the position of the international community. As for example laid out in the latest G7 a statement and the international community has to be very clear on that. Dr. Strott, is my man? Germany's government is working on a new China strategy, but there are signs that it's divided. That the foreign minister wants to be tough and the chancellor wants to be cautious, who do you agree with? Uh, we will see, uh, because it's on work, this strategy, and then we will have a discussion and then we will see. But the very important thing is that now we are working on a strategy because we have not really a China strategy. Mm -hmm. And now this government will do it and so we will see. Um, and uh, maybe we will have a discussion, but this is uh, uh, normal. Let's talk about a concrete example. If you remember the controversy over China Ocean Shipping Company, their acquisition of the terminal in Hamburg, uh, which was opposed by many ministries, including the foreign ministry, but supported by the chancellery. And you strongly criticized it at the time. What needs to be done to fix the gap? <coughs> uh, you have to see that the chancellor was a f uh, former um, um, uh, mayor. mayor of uh, Hamburg. So um, I think there's a deeper relationship to this situation. And uh, I think it's the good thing, the really good thing is that we have the discussion. Because for many people, they have no idea how big is the influence of Chinese companies in, in, in Germany, in, in Germany influence in, in um, many German um, companies. And I think this discussion was very important and so we are alert about the situation that um, it's clear for the future that we have to realize that the future must be in this case changed. Okay. Uh, well, my last question, back to the visit. Um, talking about this visit, the spokesperson of the Chinese Foreign Ministry said the root cause of the Taiwan issue is precisely the law of the jungle, hegemony, colonialism and militarism, and said Germany has a profound and painful historical lesson in this regard. Uh, Mr. Vogel, how do you respond to that? That's pretty strong words there. Uh, yeah, um, but um, it's an adult's world <laughs> uh, and so you uh, uh, need to stay relaxed when it comes to strong words and um, think about what is right and what is right. Um, if, as, uh, coming out of this horrible past, mankind um, has had in the 20th century and we as Germans know our responsibility um, that German, the German history is a, a very dark, uh, the darkest of these um, uh, chapters of history. But what has mankind learned out of it? For example, and one key element, not the only one, one key element was a rule-based order on the international uh, level, on the global level. And that's why it's so important to defend this rule-based order. And, um, well, acting by force um, uh, that uh, strong powers do whatever they like. That's the, the very opposite of this rule-based order. Um, and I think that's one of the lessons of the past. My last question for you both. As you said, the Chinese ambassador to Germany, Wu Ken, he is very happy, isn't very happy. And he advised individual German politicians not to play with fire and test China's red light on the Taiwan issue. How would you respond? to his comments, especially you, you know, go back to Germany and meeting him. Oh, we, f we feel very comfortable and take it easy. That's it? Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd add um, that, um, well, well, let's see what's going on. The, the, the change, the, the attempt to change the status quo on the Taiwan Strait mm -hmm. is coming from Beijing. The aggressiveness is coming from Beijing and so it's important to call that out. The very last one. There was a mil Chinese military exercise as you visit. Did you know that? It's not because we are here. It's every day. Everybody is talking that for months they have uh, they show their power uh, close to the uh, Taiwan border. Um, so I, I'm I'm sure that it's uh, we are not the reason. It's actually the other way around. Yeah. That these maneuvers, these aggressive actions, are taking place nearly every day. That shows. Um, uh, that we have to look and we have to care as Europeans, 
even if it's also including us Europeans, not only, but including us Europeans, um, because it's the 21st century and it's a globalized world and it may be the other side of the globe. Um, but we should care and we do care. Thank you very much. That's all the interview. Thank you.